Um, in the 19th century, 18th and 19th centuries, the church began to establish seminaries, um, particularly for the training of pastors. This has some real advantages, of course. You can hire faculty. Um, you can provide a, a, a curriculum of courses for students. Um, but it has some real disadvantages, too. Um, one of the big disadvantages is that the student gets detached from the life of the congregation, and oftentimes the theological faculties also get detached from the lives of the congregation. And the priority of ministry doesn't hold as it once did, or it gets reduced to a technique, a, a system of plans and projects that pastors can employ. So we, um, a number of congregations concerned about the life of the ELCA on the one hand and concerned about the life of the congregation, their own congregations on the other, have been looking ways um, to move theological training closer to home. Um, that's what we're doing in the Institute. Instead of taking students out of their congregations, taking students out of, the, out of the context of the relationships that have defined them. Instead of detaching, we're looking for ways to attach. It's been a tradition for a long time that students um, from the seminary where I taught for some 30 years um, went to small parishes in the upper Midwest, North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, into Montana. Uh, my dad did that. Um, I did that, only I went as far away as Oregon to start out. Um, when we were assigned, we came with our theological degrees in hand and some practical training as well. But we had to rely on the congregations to teach us. There are lots of congregations in the Dakotas, for example, eastern Montana, western Minnesota, who have had one seminarian after another, as long as they can remember, usually for three or four years, and then another one. Those congregations have become teaching congregations. They know what to expect from a seminary graduate. They know what they're going to have to teach a seminary graduate. And they know what it's going to take to make a preacher out of a seminary graduate. The congregations have been teaching the pastors. And so one pastor after another will talk about his or her first years in ministry. And those first years in ministry will be tied to a particular people in a particular place who have been teachers every bit as much as the seminary faculty was teachers. When I started out in the ministry years ago, in 1971, <laughs> I went to the state of Oregon. Four or five pastors took me under their wing, and they trained me in the ministry. They knew what I had and valued what I'd learned at the seminary, but they knew it was a long time before I was going to be a pastor. And so they went to work with them. So here are two sources of theological education that aren't usually thought of. The pastor, on the one hand, and the, the congregation on the other. Nowadays there are a bunch of us theologians wandering around. Some of us retired and some uh, looking for mischief and some just uh, deeply convicted about the life of the congregation. Uh, we can go to the congregation and we can go to the pastors and we can provide support for the pastors and the congregations in training pastors. So then what? Instead of detaching the candidate from the congregation, we anchor the candidate in the congregation. And instead of detaching the pastor, the, 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 the candidate from the pastor, we attach the candidate to the pastor and then we bring in the theologians and they like to travel anyway, you know, airplane tickets and all the rest. We bring in uh, telephones, computers, we bring in the theologians, and we provide the help that the congregations and the pastors need so that we can make it work.
Now this little institute is having some struggles getting off the ground. We're not interested in buildings and we're not interested in faculty meetings. Thank goodness. I didn't retire to go to another faculty meeting. I can guarantee you that. Rather, um, we're interested in relationships with the congregations and with the pastors and we're interested in working together to provide candidates for ministry that hit the ground running, who are ready to go, who can go to a bedside, who can stand at a funeral, who can administer the sacrament, who can preach the word with gusto and fidelity, and who will reach out into the lives of their people knowing full well who and what they are. We're looking for students who can walk into a rural community with their feet on the ground, who can go into the inner city knowing what the shape of life is there, who can go into the suburbs um, with some expectancy and confidence. We're looking for candidates who will be, first of all, loyal to Christ Jesus and to his word. We're looking for Lutherans, real ones, who confess, who uh, with joy go to the Catechism and the Augustana. And we're looking for people who are close to the hearts of the people we serve. We'd like you to help us do this. We'd like you to help us in a couple ways. Um, we need students. Hmm? We're eager to get some good students. We can do a lot for them and with them and we'd love to have some names, some encouragement from you in this way. Um, we also need money, not a lot. You know, we're, this is not a big operation, but we do need some to get ourselves established and get off the ground. And we'd appreciate your help. We think we can do something. We all have complaints, of course. We have complaints about the ELCA, which turned out to be a lot more and a lot less than we ever thought it would be. We have some complaints about what's happening among the clergy. Um, like a lot of others, I'm deeply concerned about this. My own pastor is spectacular, and I meet with a text study with uh, every in a text study every week with pastors for whom I have the deepest respect. But that's not always true. Sometimes. I wonder if my faith is going to survive another Senate Assembly. And so we worry, I worry, and watch, and wonder where the next generation is coming from. Well, instead of complaining, instead of worrying and watching, what we can do is get our sleeves rolled up, put our hands to it, and see if we can't provide some pastors. <laughs> it would be a lot of fun, huh? I mean, I just love that. Once I was out in Oregon, I stopped to see a friend of mine. He said he was going calling and he wondered if I'd go with him. We went over to the nursing home to visit some of his parishioners. He said, Jim, I know you can sing. I've stood beside you in church. Why don't we sing some duets? Pretty soon we were singing to these old parishioners in the nursing home, praying with them. I led a Bible study with a group of them. What started out to take 20 minutes wound up taking four hours. We had a ball. Well, that's what preachers do when they fool around, you know. <laughs> Speak the word, look after people, have some fun, and we're looking for people like that to serve your congregation. So God bless you. We hope you'll consider this and uh, look into what the possibilities might be. Thank you.